Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to formulate and make your own basic lotions. This uh, video is designed at a beginner level but it will also provide some valuable insight into how we create formulations if you want to go that one step further and learn how to become a cosmetic chemist or develop formulas for your own range. Before I get started, I want to clarify a couple of points about the equipment and how you need to start writing up your formulas and methods. The very first thing you'll need to do is make sure that you have your formula written to 100% by weight. As chemists, we always create our formulas to 100% by weight. We don't use mill or drops because different substances will have different weight to volume ratios. So to make sure that every batch is consistent, we always measure by weight. So if you've been measuring essential oils by drops, you'll now need to convert them into a weight measurement. And you'll also need to convert any formulas you've created by using grams or mils or some of both into a consistent percent by weight ratio. Here's an example of the formula I'll be developing today so that you can see what I mean by creating your formulas and writing them up to percent by weight. So, how did I create this formula? Let me talk you through some basic concepts when you're creating formulas for your lotions. So let's take a look at how we create natural lotion formulations. The very basics of a lotion is that it is a low viscosity emulsion. Emulsions are created when you combine water and oil using an emulsifier. In this slide you can see the dispersed phase droplets are scattered homogeneously throughout a continuous phase. So in this example, we could pretend that the dispersed phase are the oil droplets, while that continuous phase is water. This is the basics of an emulsion, which is how we formulate a lotion. When we're creating a lotion, we are creating a low viscosity emulsion. So we would use a low to mid input of emulsifying waxes. The emulsifying waxes is what helps build body to our lotion. So we don't want to put too much, otherwise we'd be creating more of a viscous cream. While a low to mid input of emulsifying wax will give us a nice lotion consistency and build some stability and body to our lotion formula. The structure will come from the emulsifying wax, but we can also add a gum. This will help support the structure we create as well as enhance the stability or shelf life of the product. When we talk about shelf life, we need to consider issues of stability, which we've built from the selection of the emulsifying wax and the gum, but we also need to use preservatives and antioxidants to help enhance that shelf life. Finally, you can build efficacy and performance into your formula from the use of various lipids, extracts, actives, essential oils, or other active ingredients. So how does this come together to create a formula? Well, we'll start by taking a look at the formula you're going to be working with today. And in this formula, we've used Olive M1000 as our emulsifying wax, and we've used Xanthan gum as our gum to help build structure and support stability. We've used some basic lipids at 11% lipid input. You can alter this if you want a more emollient or less emollient feeling lotion. You can also alter the waxes you use or the gums you use, but we've selected readily available materials for you to practice with. You'd finally add your antioxidant and preservative. We've chosen a nature identical preservative to suit this natural formulation. As a last point, you would then calculate the amount of water you need to add to make your formula equal 100% by weight. Now let's get into the practical side of things and make a sample. Before I make the sample, I am going to be using very basic equipment today. So even if you're just at home, you'll be able to do this for yourself. 
But I also want to talk you through some of the equipment we use uh, as we become more advanced with cosmetic chemistry and in laboratory settings. So at the very basic we have a whisk for stirring and I'll be using a whisk today again so that even those of you who have a very basic kitchen setup you'll still be able to create the lotion you've seen us formulate today. Uh, also very useful is a heat and chemical resistance spatula. You'll see me use these today. You may also use a stick blender. Uh, now if you are using a stick blender you will need to make sure that you're using the appropriate volume of material. Again we measure by weight but you do need to make sure that the volume of product that you're creating will cover the air holes otherwise you'll introduce a lot of air into your formula and end up with a container of mousse rather than a lotion. Uh, you'll also see me be using stainless steel bowls today, again for basic lab setups. Uh, if you're in a lab, you may be using um, glass beakerware. When we get into the lab, you will be using either low shear mixers like this propeller, or a high shear mixer like this Ica Ultra Turex here. But when creating your first samples, this advanced equipment isn't necessary to give you great results. So let's take a look at how we put that formula together into a sample now. Now first I have measured out my water only. Now I'm going to create what we call a slurry and you would use the slurry method whenever you're using a natural gum. It's the best way to incorporate the gum into the water phase. So I'm creating this slurry by measuring out my glycerin now. And to this I'm going to add my xanthan gum. Now I'm going to add my slurry slowly to my water phase. This is all cold process. This is how easy it is to add a natural gum using the slurry method. As I add it slowly I'm going to be stirring. The gum will then hydrate evenly with the water as it comes into contact with it and I'll form a nice gel instead of the unwanted fish eyes which would happen if I added the gum direct to water. Next I prepare my oil phase. So I'm going to start by adding my emulsifying wax and then my lipids. Next I'm going to heat both the oil and the water phase to the same temperature and combine them to form my emulsion. So now I have my water phase and my oil phase, they're both heating. A couple of important things to remember here. I am using a direct heat method on small samples. You may have a water bath which will heat slower but in a more controlled way. The most important thing, regardless of the heating method you use, is that when you're checking temperature, you don't touch the bottom of the vessel. You need to make sure that the thermometer you use is held within the liquid portions so that you are testing the temperature of the liquids, not the container. Now, when you get more experienced at this, you won't need to use a thermometer because really what you're needing is that all the waxes are melted, so it's all liquid and you need to make sure that the water phase is at the same temperature as this oil phase because if you add the oil phase to cool water it will set into waxy clumps. So you don't want that. You want to make sure that you're adding the oil phase to the water phase at a temperature where it will remain in a liquid state until small droplets form and that is how you get a beautiful smooth emulsion. Don't let your waxes or oils burn or your water evaporate. So when you're starting out new, you may have a few failed samples because you're not able to control the temperature. Very, very important though that you add the oils to water when it's hot to avoid any waxy clumps from forming. They would look grainy or waxy in the water compared to a nice smooth and glossy looking emulsion. 
If the lipid phase starts to get too hot, simply remove it from the heat while you wait for the water to catch up. Then when the water's hot enough, add the two phases together. So add the oil to the water. You will at this stage have quite a runny, low viscosity emulsion forming. That's fine because everything's still hot. Remember, all of your lipid phase is still molten and in a liquid state. Now that the emulsion has cooled to below 40 degrees, we can add our heat sensitive ingredients. Now, I just wanna point out at this point, you can see the lotion is still very runny. Don't despair, this will set. In fact, here is an example of this exact same formula I prepared yesterday and you can see it is not runny in the bowl, but it's still a beautiful lotion-like consistency that spreads and is beautifully light on the skin. So you will see a very low viscosity product on the day you make it like this, especially if you're creating a lotion, which tend to have a lower viscosity anyway. Don't despair, that's probably gonna be fine, but you need to see it when it's fully settled overnight. Evaluate it tomorrow. So we do need to put preservative in and our antioxidant. And this is also the point where you'd add other heat sensitive materials like extracts, uh, heat sensitive actives, essential oils or fragrances. Now your final step is to adjust pH. Now if you're just starting out at home, you might only have access to pH strips. And I'll show you an example of what these look like now. To use a pH test strip, you simply dip it in the product and wipe off the excess on the side. Then you compare it to the colour bars until you get a match. Now the skin has a pH of 5.5, so most of the creams, lotions and emulsions that you create would be pH adjusted to around 5.5 unless you have a reason to do otherwise. So other reasons may be because of some of the actives you use, they may need to be at a different pH. Otherwise you always want your product to be around 5.5. In this case, my product is testing around 4.5. So we need to add some alkaline material to bring the pH up to the 5.5 skin friendly pH we're aiming for. Now I'm going to show you how we check and adjust pH using a proper pH meter. So here's my pH probe. Now if you're going to be formulating a lot of products, you should invest in one of these probes. They're much more accurate than using pH strips. When you've got your pH at 5.5, you've finished your product. It's important to test your pH when it is at room temperature because pH is temperature dependent. Remember, even on the day of making this product, it is looking quite runny still. Don't despair, it will set overnight to be of the required lotion viscosity. And that's all there is to it. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to prepare your own emulsions at home and also how to create the formulas. If you'd like to learn more advanced formulation techniques or how to manipulate the formulas to create something that's truly unique and your own, you can find out more information about all of our courses online or email us. Please look out for other videos in this series. Happy formulating!